to understand uh, what is a class, what is the object class, and uh, what are the math class, runtime class. We'll see some of the classes from the lang package. And uh, look at first class here. So there's the one class class. What I mean here, if you're writing small C L A S S, this is the keyword. But if you're writing C capital and then L A S S, this is one again a class. This guy help us to get the name of class. Okay. Uh, there are a number of uh, methods like get methods, get fields, get constructors. Let us say some class you are having dot class file and you want to retrieve some of the stuff from that class. What are the methods? What are the fields? So what is the name of that class? What is the super class of this class, right? So you can take the help of this guy class class. So instance of the class class represents classes and interfaces in a running Java application. So an enum is a kind of class. So there's a one concept enum, which is also a class type in Java. It has been introduced very late in Java. In ZDK 1.5 it has come. And uh, annotation concept has come in ZDK 1.5. So it's a kind of interface. So every area also belongs to a class that is reflected as a class object that is shared by all arrays with the same element type and number of dimension. So whenever we are getting the array of this type, it is always a uh, object type. So if you can see here more stuff on that. So class has no public constructor. In a street class object are constructed automatically by the JVM as classes are loaded and by cost to the defined class method in the class loader. So we get it. Okay. So even we are having class dot four name we can say if you can look at this example let us say we are having object obj and in the object obj what we are doing here uh, we are saying obj dot get class. So obj dot get class this get class will help me to retrieve the class name and uh, get name will get the name of that class. Similarly, if you have some class like foo dot class and just a dot get name, you'll get the name of class here. Okay. If you can see this example here, I have one interface, interface A, and class B implements A, another class, class demo. So here, what we are doing now, we are creating object of class A and we are creating object of class B, right? So A is an interface here. So we cannot create object of A, but B is a class which is implementing A. So we can write here A of A equal to new B. So we are creating a reference for interface A, which is pointing a B class, and B is a separate class here, right? Now we are saying class X. So this is a class class which we are using here, and uh, after that. We are saying x dot or x equal to a dot get class. So a is of reference of a having pointing to b. So if I say a dot get class, it is giving me class name and is stored by x. So x referring that, and I can say x dot get name. So I'll get the name of the class here. So a is the object of type what b, because this a is pointing to whom? It is pointing to B right so output is coming what here B now B dot get class so B is object of B class itself so we are saying get class and then we are pointing and say X dot get name so again B is object itself a class of B now X dot get super class so X is pointing to B class okay X is pointing to B class now what is the super class of B a no 
this is the interface right it is not a super class of b every class is a by default subclass of what class object class right so object is the super class for b now if i say x dot get super class so x is pointing to my b class and if i say x so i am saying x dot get name so it is saying uh, b super class is a java lang object class this is the top level class of java this is a super class for all class okay so i understood the class class now next we have to understand even there is a method class okay uh, there is a field constructor this is all we are having now object class object class is the root of the class hierarchy hierarchy which we are having in java every class is a object as a super class all objects including arrays implements the method of this class so even a user defined class which does not extend any other class it extend object by default so your class is again subclass of object by default so here class object demo is not extending any class but by default this is a subclass of object we are writing s of 0 equals gems s is a type of a string here okay so but string class also extend object class so this equal method is not from the string class this equals method from the object class okay which is inherited in the string class which we are using and calling here okay if you can see this code here a uh, java p so here we are writing java p object demo in this line java p object demo is my class and it is saying there is a class object demo right class object demo extend object so if you see the class what are the content of the class it is saying extend of object so sub class of object and then it is having one default constructor and then it is having one public static void main method right this is now in the object class there are number of methods we are having like has code to a string clone methods are there which is very useful when we are working with java programs and all what does has code this method returns a hash code value for the object this method is supported for the benefit of hash tables such as those provided by the java util hash table okay the general contract of hash code is what whenever it is invoked on the same object more than once during an execution of the java application the hash code method must consistently return the same integer provided no information used in equals comparison on the object is modified so this integer need not remain consistent from one execution of an, an application to another execution of the same application it could be different okay so if two objects are equal according to the equals method then calling the hash code method on each of the two object must produce the same integer result okay so whatever object we are having it returns the integer form of that object okay it is not required that if two objects are unequal according to the equals method then calling the hash code method on each of the two object must produce distinct integer results it means if two objects are not equal the hash code will be different if two objects are equal then hash code will be the same for both however the programmer should be aware that producing distinct integer results for unequal objects may improve the performance of the hash table so that is what hash code you can write you can call hash code for your object so you just say any object and then object dot hash code method 
we can see this one example here let us say one student class you are having so this is a user defined class here we are having a student class this is having just few property and then there's a one constructor of the student class now in this class there's another class object demo one having main method and then we are calling what student s equal to new student if we are printing this s directly what value we are getting look at here but if we are doing s dot has code what it is returning integer value of that right similarly if you create new object another object okay could be the different so it would be the different it is a number but if these two objects are same then it return the same integer i mean it is a same has code for both okay now next is the to string very important method of this object class to string you can use to a string whenever you want to re represent as a string i mean if you are having some object any object and that object you want to represent as a string then you will use to a string method here so let us say class is student and there is some variable this is one constructor now what we have done we have written to a string because whenever we are printing this object here by default to a string method is calling so if i don't override it will return what nothing right because here to a string means it will return just information only but once we are overriding to a string and then we are printing and then that value will return so in to a string we are returning roll number name amount is so all we are concatenating and returning as a string here right return type is a string so whenever we are calling is automatically this to a string is getting called so we are writing system order pin line in this line what method is getting called this method is getting called here even if writing is dot to a string also it is the same no matters so you must override to a string method in your class if you want to return something by the object when if i display object here so it is displaying all the values here five time uh, term for 50.5 and 30 so that is the age here and this is the amount and this is the name and this is what roll number okay like that so this is to a string now uh, next is the clone method it is a protected return type is object and clone method throws one exception that is a clone not supported exception okay clone not supported exceptions so let us say you made uh, you make one class and you create a object for that and you want to create a clone of that object what is the benefit of that creating clone if you are doing anything with the cloned ob object there is no changes will happen with original object so that will be remain same and changes will happen only with the cloned object and so creates and return a copy of this object the precise meaning of copy may depend on the class of the object the method clone for the class object performs a specific cloning operation first if the class of this object does not implement the interface clonable then this exception will thrown that is a clone not supported exception means that object whatever you have defined it must implements clonable interface so this is one interface which you have to implement in your object class note that all arrays are considered to implement the interface clonable otherwise this method creates a new in instance of the class of this object and initializes all its field with exactly the contents of the corresponding field of this object so 
as if by assignment the contents of the fields are not themselves cloned. Thus, this method forms, performs a shallow copy of this object, not a deep copy operation. Okay, so there is a two type of copy like shallow copy and deep copy. So the class object does not itself implement the interface clonable. So calling the clone method on an object whose class is object will result in throwing an exception as a trank. Okay. The general intent is that for any object X, the expression X dot clone not equal to X will be true, right? So there's one X object and the X dot clone. So both will be different here, right? So both will be here. Here it will be different, right? Now, you can just see this example here, a good example on clone here. So, let us say I have one class and that is a imply class. This imply class is implementing, implements clonable. If this guy is not implementing clonable and you are trying to create a clone of this object, we'll throw exception and that is a clone not supported exception. This exception will throw here if it is not. So this guy is required when you are calling clone method, right? Now here I have a public imply one constructor I have. So you can see this constructor and then I have one public object clone method. So I am just overriding here a clone method because this clone method is from which class it is from the object class and implies a subclass of object right remember every class is a subclass of object here right so we are overriding that clone method and we are saying super dot clone so super is what super class clone super class is the object class and we are calling the clone method from that and then say return clone here and then catch clone not supported exceptions system or line e return none okay there's a, some method here and there's another method like set hire day and raise salary now come to this clone test dot java here we are trying to create one uh, main method and then we are creating object of imply so imply emp equal to new imply amardeep 50000 and then imply dot set hire day. So we are setting hire day now. And then we are doing what imply dot clone. We are creating the clone of EMP and storing to EMP1. Okay. And then we are saying EMP1 dot raise salary by 20. EMP dot set hire. Different date we are setting, right? And then we are printing EMP and EMP1. So what output we are getting here? Look at here. Imply, first imply, right? EMP. So it is Amardip here. And then I have a 5000 and hard day is what I have set here. Uh, May 18, 2010, right? Now, the copy is saying Amardip. Salary is now 6000. Hard day has been uh, modified. So EMP is remain same, right? So that's the benefit of creating clone. If I'm creating clone of EMP, the EMP value will be remain there if I do changes with the EMP1. So this is a clone method here.